for those who don't know me, my name is Lisa O'Halloran and I'm the district trainer for District 6270. And I'm delighted that you're all here tonight to talk about club programs. We want our members to find long-term value in their relationships with Rotary. People join Rotary for a variety of reasons. Some are looking for leadership opportunities, other hope to make new connections and expand their networks. Um, while others really want to support and give back to their communities. We know club meetings are the glue that holds clubs together and enables them to do the good work of Rotary. This means what we do at our club meetings plays a key role in engaging and retaining members. We also know it takes a great deal of effort to plan and organize programs for club meetings. Tonight, our discussion focuses on planning club programs. We have a panel of Rotarians with us to share how this is managed within their own clubs. And in a moment, I will ask them to introduce themselves. The format of our session is really quite formal tonight. I have a few prepared questions for the panel, but I welcome your questions too. You can type questions or comments in the chat box or raise your hand and then ask your questions. Don's gonna be watching for those raised hands. After questions, we'll move forward to some small breakouts to share ideas and exchange best practices. And then as we move to the end of our time together, we do have two polls prepared to capture your best program ideas and takeaways from the session. The results of those polls will be emailed to everyone who registered along with a link to the session recording that will be uploaded to the district's YouTube channel. So let's get started. And I know we have one panelist who's going to be joining us a little bit late, but we have two in the room to get us started. Uh, to maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and your club and our take on our first question. Tell us why you think programs in our clubs are so important. Oh, Dolph is in the room. Thank you. All three are here. Thank you, Don. Appreciate that. Um, so John, could, do you mind leading us off? Um, I'm John Nichols. Um, I've been in the Oshkosh Rotary Club for uh, about 38 years. And um, in my former life, before I retired, I was director of Oshkosh Public Library. And I have to say that uh, the year I did program chair may have been the hardest year of my work in the club, at, uh, <clears throat> even though I was president many years ago. Thank you for that. It is hard work when done well. Welcome, Mark. Could you introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, hello, I'm Mark Thurner from the Elmbrook Rotary Club down here in Brookfield, Elm Grove, Wisconsin. Um, <clears throat> I've been with the Elmbrook Rotary for about 26 years, and um, I have recently jumped in about the last two years uh, in helping with program coordination. I've always been, uh, uh, we've always been able to schedule good programs right on through, and it was important that we continue that uh, because obviously it, it is it makes an impression on new members. I also happen to be the co-chair of the membership committee for the last 20 years, so I understand the connection between the two. Um, so I look forward to uh, some good discussion. Wonderful, thank you. It certainly does make an impression on new members. And Dolph is here. Could you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, uh, Dolph DeCuster. I'm uh, currently the president of the West Bend Sunrise Rotary um, and uh, was asked to come talk a little bit about how our programming works and how we structure it. And ironically, I think my all of my experience with Rotary, um, both of my clubs I've been in, I think do their programming the same. So to me, it's not that unique. It's kind of like, hey, this is how we do things. Um, and it works really well for us. So looking forward to sharing that. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. So welcome and thank you all for sharing so generously with your time this evening. Um, let's get started. So what do you guys think makes a good club program? What, are, what, are, what criteria do you use or how do you think about what was, is going to make for an engaging program? And any of you can jump in. I would start with, um, uh, typically we get a certain programs that are from, uh, that are coincidentally nonprofits that are looking for some support in some way, shape or form, uh, whether it be hands-on or whether it be monetary. Um, and th those programs are valuable because it educates us on uh, what's, 
a, a particular organization or program that's within our community that we may not be as familiar with. And typically those uh, people that come in and speak are very engaging and are very interested in presenting a good program for obvious reasons. So uh, typically we get a really good response on all of those types from our members. Wonderful. Nonprofits are key and they, they can become some really wonderful partners for us. I will also, um, before we go to the other two panelists, invite those in the audience Feel free to add to the chat. What do you think makes a good program? Feel free to share that there as well. Uh, Dolphur John, anything you'd like to add on that question? What do you think makes a good club program? I, I guess in our I, my, my experience was at, at the time that we, we had a pretty wide variety of programs and a fair number of them of real topical interest. Um, you know, that something was going on at the time. A, a good example of that. I should mention that when I did program chairmanship, um, it was in the middle of the pandemic and we transitioned in that year from all Zoom meetings to hybrid meetings. Mm -hmm. So there was an awful lot of technology upheaval and change going on. And fortunately, Don Griffin was working uh, with, with, with me at the time to handle coordinating a lot of that. But it had, it had its downside and its upside. Um, and one of the things was we were able to have a young doctor who happened to have grown up here in Oshkosh um, who was now a pulmonary specialist in Chicago, who assisted in the first double lung transplant in the United States, be able to do a program via Zoom that ordinarily would never have been able to happen, um, you know, in, in that regard. And so there were um, up, upsides to that. It was very timely. We had the county health officer in um, at least twice to do programs during that year to talk about what was going on. Um, so that... That's where a lot of interest, you know, get, gets you know generated. Yeah, absolutely. Those are some tremendous programs. Um, John and I have, and Don, all three of us are in the same club. <laughs> Full disclosure there. Uh, in Zoom, you're right. Hybrid and Zoom really created some opportunities uh, for us as well to leverage some people that ordinarily would not be able to travel to be with us and to share. And that's something I think is important that we not lose sight of going forward that we can still leverage that, whether it's it's a speaker like you had in or an ex, a previous exchange student checking in and presenting, right? Lots of opportunities there. Dolph, from your perspective, what do you think makes a good program? Uh, yeah, um, well, a, a good program, I mean, a variety is important, right? I mean, I think uh, one of the reasons why it's important to have good programming and good speakers is because uh, if you think about most clubs, and again, I know how our club functions, I'm assuming most clubs are the same. When you look at your weekly agenda or weekly schedule of, of what you're going to go through, it looks very similar each week. And I think the, uh, the, the speakers usually can break that up a little bit with different uh, varieties of topics and so on and so forth. And then to echo what, I don't know if it was Mark or John that said it, but you know, to hear from our community, um, not only from nonprofits, but our police departments and our fire chiefs and our um, all those pieces we have we have those people they almost rotate through every every year year and a half um uh, because they know how much we contribute back to the community and we know and they know how that's important so um and it's just great to hear from those people because we all live in these communities so yeah absolutely thank you john did you have something to add no no that was that okay. was good good great so how do you communicate with your speakers? Do you communicate expectations? What, what does that process look like between your club and your presenters? So I'll take that first. Uh, and, and Lisa, Lisa, if you're okay with me sharing kind of how our program works, I don't know how unique it is, but um, we don't necessarily have a program chair uh, like some other clubs do. Um, we have all of our speakers uh, invited by our club members. So all of our club members on a rotating basis are on a schedule. Uh, to be a speaker host a certain day, and that's going to help with our programming for that day. Uh, and again, both the Fond du Lac Morning Club and the Sunrise Club in West Bend that I've been part of both do it the same way. So we do have one person that's in charge of getting that list out and making sure that there's people scheduled, um, but they're essentially just filling in the spots. Our actual members are in charge of, of finding all these speakers. Um, so, so and your original question, I wanted to fill that in real quick. Tell, tell me what your original question was again, Lisa. How do you communicate with your oh, speakers? Yeah, so so we we normally put our, our hosts in charge of communicating with them what the expectations are, when they should show up, what time, how our meetings are run, what, what the expectations are in terms of timeline, 
um, what they talk about, what we prefer they don't talk about, because although the 401 uh, or 501c3s will come in and, and talk about support for their organizations, they're not always coming in to ask for a specific donation. They're just telling us about what their nonprofit's all about. So if and when there's ever a gift that comes across our board's doorstep, we know who they are, what they're all about, and what they've had going on. So, mm -hmm. but, but it's all communicated group, at least, um, with, the, uh, with the members that are being the host for that week. Wonderful. And I think after this question, Dolph, we'll dig into that a little bit more in terms of how that works for you. Uh, okay. So you, I think you have somewhat of a unique approach. Um, John, John and Mark, how do you communicate expectations and, and coordination with your speakers? I basically did that through um, emails early on with each speaker that, that I, I did as program chair. Um, and sometimes things might change a little bit depending on who the speaker was. Um, you know, on, on occasion, as we all know, we get um, speakers who are political um, running for office or something like that and try to um, alert them to the fact that, you know, we, we are a nonpartisan organization and um, try to keep that in mind as, as much as possible when they're talking. But otherwise, it's, it, it's pretty much routine. It, it would just be a case of, you know, how long, is, how long do you have for speaking? Um, are there any particular um, things they needed assistance with at, at the program? Um, that, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. It is much easier to alert them in advance, right? Than than when they're when they've got the microphone in their hand, <laughs> makes it much harder. Mark, I'm seeing some nods. Anything to add there? Well, uh, um, we kind of funnel the the uh, communication through the, the the two of us that do the speaker coordination, which is the other one is Thomas, uh, and he uh, uh, about six months into it maybe about two years ago, uh, we developed, we, we just developed a template that we can personalize that has all that information in it. And um, if there, we just, uh, we might personalize it a little bit to the person as well as if there might be something going on, like uh, a change in the, in the available time based on an induction of a new member or something like that. But the template covers all those things and then also alerts them about, you know, um, the technical support that we can provide, how they might, you know, if they're doing an in-person speaker uh, program, uh, what they should bring or how we can uh, ask them how we might be able to support them, gives them three different options of how we can support their presentation. And the same on the Zoom side, because we are still running hybrid meetings as well. Wonderful. Would it be possible for you to share that template? Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. If you, I don't know how, if you can locate it quickly, you're welcome to share it in the chat. Otherwise, if you'd like to email it to me, I can ensure it goes out to everyone with the follow-up communication after the meeting next week. Okay. Okay, wonderful. And thanks for that, for that question. Um, let's move next into, and, and we've, we've dabbled on this a little bit because we talked about nonprofits looking for support, but talk about your approach to creating the schedule, right? How do you balance nonprofits and, and government and industry and club business and rotary initiatives? Um, it, does anyone have sort of a formula or an approach that you use to ensure, you know, you don't have three consecutive weeks are... No, so similar in nature, that type of thing. How do you make sure you have that variety and that representation? I guess I would, in, in our case, I would, I would try to be scheduled, you know, close to three months out, number one. But number two, my, my best suggestions are robbing programs from others. Um, and um, in, in Oshkosh at the university, we have a very active learning and retirement chapter. And I basically looked at their schedules of programs and looked through those programs to see if I found the programs and program presenters who I thought would be do a really good job with a shorter program, since they typically were an hour long, um, you know, at our club. And did the same kind of thing at the senior center and other places to see, you know, who's inviting who, as well as scanning the newspapers, um, you know, looking at the Oshkosh Herald and the Oshkosh Northwestern to see what's happening. Uh, we, we have a really good paper, the Oshkosh Examiner, where they do very good investigative reporting looking at local government. Sometimes it issues not everybody's picking up on. So using those kinds of resources, I would really try to get speakers slotted in um, in, in a variety of ways while, while trying to pay attention to keeping a slot or two open for something that just comes up that you really want to have room for. 
Nice. So remaining a little flexible so you can respond to those timely, timely things. Question from the chat uh, from John Henderson. How often do you have rotary information programs? So how did that factor in? You know, more of a rotary specific an initiative or project or that type of thing. Thoughts on that? Was that a conscious piece or not so much? In our case, the club president usually asked me to set aside a date in the ahead that she would want to use or have available for something. So okay. potentially once every month or two, there'd be a date set aside for, for that type of thing. Uh, personally, I think it would be a good idea at least once or twice, um, once, or, once every month or two. To, and that's where I think the Zoom came in handy. Um, I have to commend Don Griffin, who is well connected in Rotary, um, who had speakers that came from, I think, Washington State, from Arizona, uh, from other places and other districts in, in the country to do presentations for us via Zoom. And I think those were great. Wonderful. Thanks, John. Um, and John has a follow-up. Because um, because I, I want to actually kind of a clarification from John. Um, are you talking about club-specific rotary information or are you talking about big R rotary, uh, foundation, fellowships, rags? Uh, can you clarify that a little bit more, John? In our case, the, I think the president was looking for president's choice meetings um, you know, rather than big R Rotary. But during our time, Don, I think what we were able to do is have some of those outside road, Rotary speakers come in and do presentations about things that were going on in, in their aspect of Rotary um, that were really very good. And, and I think all clubs could do a better job of um, trying to do more of that and more systematically and probably more districts and, and uh, the you know, US Rotary could do a better job of feeding us some of those that they would like to have scheduled in from time to time. And John, uh, mm -hmm. you, you wanna clarify your question a little bit more too, please? Yeah, I, I think it's all of the above. I think we need to uh, uh, do things for the club to let you know, let people know what's going on within the club, get the members to know each other, whatever that may be. But also, uh, you don't want to lose sight of having them understand the bigger picture of Rotary. And also, you know, I know our new president, incoming president, wants to do uh, more about uh, making the learning center more, uh, make our members more knowledgeable about the learning center so they can use it. Lisa, could I, could I interject here? Just Please. Something? I was thinking about saying it later, but uh, or if the opportunity presented itself, but it, it's why I'm a real advocate for maintaining some type of hybrid Zoom capabilities. Um, when I was club president, I went to the president-elect training seminar at that time. What I really remember was, wow, this is a different aspect of Rotary than I ever get from my monthly and weekly club meetings. Um, and I really think the Zoom component allows us to do things by bringing that outside rotary into local clubs that are really not possible easily other ways, other than a speaker coming to present at a club meeting, you know, in person. And that's harder to do and much easier to do with Zoom. Agreed. Thank you for that, making that point. Uh, and and that, real, that realization when you go to pets or go to other things, it's bigger than just us right here. There's a whole great big rotary world out there. And the more that we can make that accessible, the better off we'll be. So, so thank you for adding that and thank you for the questions. Um, anything else from the chat at this point, Don? You can't hear my head rot rattle, no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so thank you for John talking a little bit about your approach. Um, Mark and, and Dolph, how about yours to, to balancing the, the variety and the types? Uh, it's reasonably, in our case, it's reasonably informal. <clears throat> uh, Thomas and I will review it about once a month. And again, like John says, we're, we're, you know, we attempt to be two to three months out if we can to make sure that we have that variety and mix and then may uh, uh, seek some things out. Um, we're, we're fortunate uh, that our, 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 our website uh, does generate some interest for people that want to come and speak. Um, and typically uh, that, uh, and it may not necessarily be a nonprofit, just a point of interest or a topic of, of relevant interest as, as John mentioned. Um, and 
Um, I would concur about uh, the Zoom opportunity. I mean, this 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 came to light as we we uh, had a program um, with a a district governor and current club president, two different people from the Ukraine that was made through a connection of one of our members that was a, a former uh, military chaplain. Um, and that was um, to have the Ukrainians on with us uh, while they're in the middle of uh, uh, what's going on um, was really <clears throat> emotional for our members and created a connection that you know wasn't possible live, wouldn't have ever been possible. So, um, uh, and that goes back to um, the point also made about being ready to slide in some of those impromptu, because that one had to be uh, kind of uh, made room for as a higher priority program, and we were able to move some things around. Um, and so um, we're not, Having a slot open that's only, that's only three weeks out doesn't bother us because we know we'll either be able to fill it or we'll have some kind of president you know, re request from our club president and the like or something like that Ukraine opportunity come up that we wouldn't have known about a week ago. Mm -hmm. And there's those, those learning center opportunities as well, right? You can pull content, you could on the fly do a, a big R, as I think Don said, a, a big rotary type topic could be pulled in too that you facilitate locally, could be another option too. Um, Dolph, yours is very, I think, different. So you talked a little bit about members taking turns. Can you tell us more about how that works? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 quite simple, at, but again, that's because that's what we're used to, um, but we literally, we have a rotating list and uh, we have actually our president elect nominee that uh, in their year that their nominee uh, are, they're in charge of taking care of that list, but we essentially have a running list um, along with our greeter list that we send out to the whole club uh, about every two weeks. Um, we have that list of people. Uh, we essentially just assign a date to them. Uh, we have it listed out about 90 days or so, and, and they know what date they're required to bring a speaker to the club. And we don't really have too much trouble uh, finding a variety of speakers. And uh, just like Mark said, you know, a lot of times things come up short notice or people that say, hey, here's a great opportunity or, or we have a new club in town and they'll often say, hey, we had so-and-so come talk to our club. You guys should invite them. Um, and we have a mix of nonprofits and local businesses and more unique things. And, and if we have a few weeks in a row where we feel like, oh, We've got a few nonprofits that are coming to talk to us. We'll we'll make sure we push in a few uh, businesses. But we've had, you know, a local uh, aquaponics uh, farm that came and talked to us this week. We had on Flag Day, we had a, a gentleman that makes local wooden flags with a wave in it. He makes them um, and kind of got it off the ground three years ago. It was really cool for him to come show how he makes those and how he's been able to market those. And they're all custom made things. Next week we have a guy that used to be in radio that's coming to talk to our club about um, the, a podcast that he started to kind of create positivity in the environment. And it's all Washington County based uh, things that he interviews every week. So we really, and again, again it, I'm not trying to sound conceited. We just don't have any trouble finding good content and people that want to come talk to our club because that, that word kind of spreads. We try to get it out on social media when we can. Um, and I think we have a, a good amount. I, I think the size of the club matters too, by the way. I think if you have a, a, a club with 12 people, it's very hard for everybody to continue to find people. Uh, and the size town that you're in probably is going to make a difference too. But again, we have about 55 members right now. Um, and and I, I will say we don't have much trouble finding, because everybody kind of knows what to expect out of the speakers. Um, and now Mary, Mary Beth is on, on the call too here so maybe she'll correct me and she's like no we don't have enough variety Dolph but I, I, I think we have a really good uh, good good group of variety so and I think I think you make a good point there too with 55 members this is not a huge task you're asking of the members it means once a year right basically right, right? so uh, on, on those and, numbers it's not like I'm doing this once a month or well, and for those that are considering putting that in, I mean, it's not even once a year, really, because if right. you think about it, on we have the first week of the month, we have our in-service meetings, we don't have a speaker. Um, and and you will have people that are so well connected in the community that they can come up with a speaker on short notice. And you have other people that maybe are in a line of work where they don't interact with people a ton, or they're, they're newer to the community and don't know a ton of people or don't know what kind of speakers we normally have. And we simply help those people fill those uh, fill those spots. So it's 
it's luckily for our club, it's, it's pretty much a non-issue. So. Do you keep that list someplace where members can see it? So let's say it's my turn in six weeks. Is there a way for me to easily know who, who do we have the next five? Yeah, so that we I have, don't so we ask have, somebody who's already been asked type thing? We have a few attachments that go out with every one of those emails that gets sent out every two weeks. Um, okay. And uh, mm -hmm. and that we have a list of suggested ideas. And again, I think we have Perfect. three literally in the last week or so that I've sent to the people that manage that list for us right now. I think I have, we have three ideas that came to the table of people that want to come speak to our clubs. And some of them are, one of them, for example, is the Albrecht Free Clinic, which is a, it is a local nonprofit, but we've supported them as long as 15 years ago with small and big gifts. And they have a lot of things changing in their world and how they're approaching their, and, and ironically, the person that runs it is that she's actually a Rotarian herself in uh, uh, Grafton, maybe I think, Ruth Henkel. But anyway, so Ruth reached out to me and said, hey, I'd love to come give your club an update on what's going on. And of course, we're going to welcome them with open arms and, and hear what they have to say. So. Absolutely. Thank you. So it's Mark, you work with Thomas. You're a team of two. And, and Dolph, it sounds like in your club, it's the, the PEN who's in charge of the list and, and keeping that rolling. Um, John, did I miss, did you do that pretty much solo or did you have a committee that you work with? It was solo. solo. Um, I did recruit Suponic to help some. And mm -hmm. uh, she was our uh, kind of marketing coordinator at the time. So Sue was, with, you know, and, and basically the other thing is to periodically invite club members to suggest ideas or to bring things to your attention and, and try to keep doing that through the newsletter and other things. Um, but um, it, you know, it, it, and that maybe is why it's hard. That, that's intriguing to think about having the club members do it themselves. And, and uh, you know, that, that idea ought to be shared more widely um, for club presidents to think about. And it creates, yeah, and it creates engagements with all the members too. So. Right. Exactly. I love that. I think I, I have one more question, and then I want folks in the audience, if you have questions, um, feel free to add them. Um, but I have one more question here, a little bit about how do you promote programs to your members, and how do you share stories? Like, what kind of PR are you doing around your programs? The, the two things that I would mention is, given that that was a pandemic and a transition year from, from all Zoom to hybrid meetings, uh, working with Don, uh, again, to Don's credit, um, he encouraged us and helped set up using, using Club Runner. Um, and we were using the events planner and Club Runner to basically set up all the programs. And I would feed the information in as soon as we started getting something scheduled. And then he had it set it up for automatic email coming out to club members about what was coming up, what program is coming up, and when is it coming up, um, up to and including, I think, the, the you know, the last weekend, right before the Monday meeting. Um, so that worked, I think, very well. It, it took some time to get it set up, but it's there as a tool for everyone to use. And everybody knows what programs are coming up. Um, and Sue, our marketing coordinator, did a very good job of not only doing the communication to the media from time to time, depending on what the program was, uh, but like in the case of um, the pulmonary specialist, invited the nursing school at UWO um, to have any of their students and, and to, to and at that time, they could come in on Zoom, and they did, um, as well as the head of the nursing program. So Sue so was very good at thinking about who is the program, and are there some people who would be interested in this that we want to get in and invite in, you know, to join us as the club. Absolutely. We're extending Rotary into the community in a different way, doing that, connecting them with content that's meaningful to them. Mark and Dolph, any comments from, from your perspective on promotion? In our case, it's very similar to what John described. Um, and in our Zoom, uh, our, our automated Zoom communication, um, we have a, a word about the speaker that's coming up for this particular week and what's behind that organization. Some, you know, maybe three sentences uh, to, if the members are looking at that, you know, uh, do I want to be, I, I really want to be a part of seeing that, et cetera. And then we have a similar, uh, working relationship with our public relations committee on getting things out uh, to media, or if it's something to do with the schools or something along those lines where we're, um, we're inviting uh, outside guests to come in to be a part of uh, seeing what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Dolph, anything from your end? Well, we don't, we don't really do the hybrid meetings anymore. Uh, we haven't for quite some, some time. So that part uh, isn't something we can, 
we do necessarily, but we do, you know, from a PR standpoint, we do post on uh, on social media when we can, when speakers were there, what they were doing. And that's, that's more a promotional thing for the club, I think, too, to kind of show people what we're doing and why it's interesting to be part of the club, uh, in addition to the, the more obvious reasons. So, and is um, that more of a, a recap than a preview? Yeah, it, it probably doesn't even have more. Yeah, we don't do much of a preview because, I mean, we, we do actually, um, we do have the list of speakers listed on our website, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure how many people are utilizing that list. I, I don't, I can't imagine it's a lot. I don't know. Thank you. Um, well, th thank you all. I, I think now I, I, Don tells me that he is is ready. We're going to give you all some time to chat uh, in small groups. We have three breakout groups set up. Each of the panelists will be in one of the three. Uh, but really, this is a time for you to connect and share ideas. Did you hear something that you want to know more about? Or do you have an idea to share? We're going to give you about 10 minutes to do that. Um, in small groups and then bring you on back to do some sharing out. Um, I will ask if each group has maybe a highlight or two that you heard that you think um, should be shared forward to the larger group. And then we will use Menti to capture uh, some info. I'm gonna ask each of you to share what's the best program that your club has done lately. Um, and then to close, I'll ask you what your, what your takeaways are from the session tonight. Um, and Mary has a question. Um, how people have, oh, how are people finding Club Runner and Facebook for effectiveness? So Mary, I'm gonna let you take that into your group. How many people have Club Runner and Facebook and how are you finding effectiveness? Take that into your group. Others might consider that question as well. Otherwise it's an open discussion point and let's see what you come up with. Um, if we're ready, Don, we can go to breakout. Okay, I'm going to open up the rooms. You should get uh, invited to go into the room. Uh, please have fun. Uh, there's one individual that I'm going to have to push you in a little bit late, but please, please bear in mind and have fun. And I'll we'll see you in about uh, 10, 11 minutes. Thank you, Don. Welcome back, everyone. I trust you had an opportunity to meet some folks or renew some connections and to have some conversation. Uh, were there any takeaways or ahas or ideas that yeah. happen in your group that you'd like to share? Yeah, I, 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 wanna, I just want to share that uh, I'm appreciative of this meeting and uh, I really appreciate all of the information that the gentleman uh, shared with us tonight. And while our club is uh, small, uh, I could see us implementing some of the things that they said on a, a smaller scale. So I'm on a I'm I'm in a listening mode. But again, I appreciate all of the information. Wonderful. Thanks, Ruby. Glad you could be with us and that you uh, you found some value in some of the ideas the panel had to share with us. Yeah, great value. <laughs> great. Looking around the room, anyone else have? Uh, uh, John Henderson looks like he has something. Nope, he was just he was just waving. Okay, he was waving at you. Yep, uh, Mr. Bassett. I'll be muted. Oh, I thought Don was going to unmute me and let me in. Um, <laughs> I like the uh, the stuff that uh, Elkhorn does when they do a uh, a field trip. Um, one of the things that we've had issues with in the past is if we do an offsite uh, meeting, um, it's kind of uh, different than the norm, but uh, their caterer just puts their lunches in boxes and, uh, and they have uh, the same caterer do the meal everywhere. So it works uh, good for them. We've done that a couple of times and it worked, but uh, theirs is a regular schedule. Nice. So working with your, your food service provider at your location and putting something together for you. That sounds great. Yeah, I just want to say I want to say something really quick. I, I I was a little surprised with this nice weather we're finally having. We wait all year for this. I'm the only one sitting outside. The only other person with an outside background is Rob. And Rob, you have winter behind you right now? I don't even know it's, what's going on. It's 90, 95 degrees at my house. And uh, this is the only way I can be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it for the, the last two days on my uh, backdrop because it's been so warm. I got the uh, I got heat exhaustion getting the mail today. <laughs> I agree, Rob. Your your background made me feel a little cooler. It was very refreshing. Thank you. So, Mary Beth, did I see your hand? 
it yes you did um I threw out the question and there were a lot of answers and I was a little surprised. I wondered where most clubs put their speaker on the agenda, because as I said, I've been to meetings where the speaker is last and boy, members have their food and they have their club business and then they're out the door. And I always feel bad for the speaker and Dolph, it's not our club. We seldom have a, an early out, but some clubs are terrible. And surprisingly enough, the several clubs, Sheboygan Early Bird, um, Mitchell Field, Menominee Falls, they all had their speakers first on the agenda, especially they said if they're hybrid meetings, because that way, you know, you can get a guest speaker zoom in, they don't have to sit through all the club business and all the food while we're eating, they can speak, they know they have a half an hour. Uh, one club mentioned they meet already at 645 in the morning, speakers at 7 to 730. And then speakers done and then they have their club business so I was a little surprised at that um but I think it apparently works for some clubs interesting yeah. um maybe in the chat would folks share what the placement is of your speaker is it first is it after um I think Mary Beth's looking for just a little bit of feedback there where do you position yours or feel free to unmute probably a, a quick response in the chat where does it fall? In my club in Oshkosh, we do business first and then speaker. Uh, hi, in the, in the Milwaukee uh, North Sunrise Club, we do business first and then the speaker. And uh, when we have our next board uh, meeting, I'm going to suggest that we allow our speaker to speak first be and then handle our club business. Because sometimes what it, that has happened for us is it takes us over our meeting time. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing worse than people walking out on the speaker, right? Yeah. Having to yeah. leave when they need to get someplace. But, yeah. but speakers can go over too, Ruby. So be, I, I'd be careful with that because speakers can sometimes go along and cut in the rest of your meeting. That'd be the other thought, the, the flip side thought of that. Um, yeah. I, we, we do our business first and I like it that way and it seems to work yeah. and yes, Yes, yeah. some of our meetings run long, but like uh, like yeah. Mary Beth said, we have an early out yeah. uh, box where people pay to leave early, and we it's not too often that it's a few people sometimes, but very rare that somebody walks out or or yeah. very rare that it looks bad. Let me put it that way. But yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting I, to see that. Yeah, I I agree with you, and that's something that we're going to resolve in our club because we've had the speaker to go over. And we've had our meetings to go longer. So that's something that we need to kind of work out in our club. Mm -hmm. right. in, our, in our club, it's the president's job, whether through body language or a shepherd's hook, to uh, keep the speaker to a, 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 a normal time frame. Mm -hmm. Angie makes a good point, though. Less than 20 minutes really isn't fair to a speaker. Make sure we're giving them the amount of time we've agreed to. I think one of the best practices we heard from all of our panelists is that clear communication of expectations ahead of time. The ground rules, here's what you can expect. We you know if it's we eat first, we eat very quickly, you're welcome to join me early because you'll be on by 12.15 or 12.10 or whatever that is. Uh, but being clear on expectations so we can manage to it. Well, and I think if, you're, if your business portion runs that long that you're not giving your speaker enough time to speak at the end, that should be easily fixed because that's something you can manage as a club. So that 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 should be on your president or whoever's running the meetings. So. Mm -hmm. All right, some good stuff in the chat. Mary Beth, are you getting some good feedback? I am, I am. One other thing I heard that I liked, if I may, um, mm -hmm. we were talking earlier about rotary business, the big R, as Don said, the big R, and introducing our clubs to more of things that are going on outside their own club. Somebody mentioned, I think Sheboygan Early Birds, that they have at their monthly assembly, they have a rotary minute and someone gets up and talks about rotary business, whether it be polio or disaster response fund or something. But that's a good way to get a little rotary news into the club too. Just doing it at an assembly once in a while. Yep. I'm seeing some nods around the room, Rotary Minute. I know in my club, we have we have did that for a time and not currently. John Henderson? Yeah, just right now, the, the you know, most of us, I did, but most, most of the people in the district did not go to Houston. 
and the videos from the plenary sessions are on the RI site, very easily found right now. Make a great program. Jennifer Jones' speech her at the end of the uh, convention was just very, very inspiring. Get that idea for programs. Those are really great. And if I could mention, I don't know that everyone knew. I was a virtual conference mm -hmm. convention attendee, so they're hoping that in the future they'll keep that. You didn't get cho choice of all the breakouts, but you generally got a choice of three or four of the breakouts and every one of the plenary sessions, general sessions and the friendship, um, friendship, uh, not friendship, house of friendship. Yes, going into that. So it was great. Mary Beth, you did that too. I did, it was great. And I think we could see better face to face on our little computer than if we had been one of the 11,000 sitting in the back row at the <laughs> auditorium. So it was great. And That's we didn't awesome. get COVID. <laughs> and we didn't get COVID, Don. <laughs> no, I, I will say I, I came back with a special gift of COVID. However, I was also close enough to the stage so that I could see things on stage and look up at the big screen. So there, you know, there was also a bunch of us that's, that cordoned off seats that could have gotten more of the district members together. So I okay. think we're ready. We're so ready. what we're going to do here, folks, um, if you haven't used it before, I'll tell you a little bit about it. We're using Menti uh, for feedback. It's a great way to collect feedback. It looks like John dropped a link into the chat so you can click on that. And Don, you're going to display it for us, correct? Here we go. So we have two questions and you get to type your answers and they will all display. And it says he started screen sharing, but I'm not seeing anything yet. There yeah. it is. Okay. First one. So you, if they click on that link, they get right to this page, correct, Don? Correct. Okay. If you want to use a phone or a different device, you can do that too. And then you can still see what's up on the screen. You can go to menti.com and type in the number at the very top of your screen, which is that 5504-3048. So two options for joining. You can grab a secondary device, menti.com, and type in that number, or you can simply click on the link um, and answer that question. So love it. Oh, Angie, shout out to Angie, Council on Legislation Update. Thank you. What's the best program? She typed that program? herself. <laughs> See, that's, that's the beauty of this, Rob. It's anonymous. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, Happy, it's anonymous Happy. unless you recognize the way she spells her name. I got to look at that. I, I'm typing my response. I don't know what it says. <laughs> um, met with a panel of Ukrainians to discuss their own relief efforts in Ukraine. That's fantastic. Toss up meetings with our twinning club in Italy and the program for Amigos Rotarian and his humanitarian trip to Poland border to take medical supplies. Yep. So I love this because we're hearing this is what uh, John Nichols said to us at the top, right? topical timely and some of those things that just came right in um it's just real and meaningful in the moment there was a project on the women's shelter um a bourbon maker out of madison with tasters at 7 30 in the morning that would be memorable uh, once we learned about local happenings we were not aware of yeah staying connected to our communities and you can do you can add more than one you can add, you can keep adding these and this will be captured and shared out. Uh, presentation from a district governor and a local club president from Ukraine out via Zoom to the district to current needs and best ways to help. Love that. Rotary projects other clubs are doing internationally. So great stuff here. So thank you for sharing these and hopefully some inspiration for those of you who are looking for ideas to take back to your clubs on things to consider. All right, uh, local history. Absolutely, absolutely. We just had a program in our club last week on local history. Okay, and our second question for the night, are we ready for the I'm second question? Council on Legislation Program. I, I missed that question. I heard Council on Legislation, but nothing before I, that. I, I'm available to do that in person or via Zoom. Thank you, Angie. 
There you go. Another program idea to add to your schedule. Um, this one is a little bit more of a reflection on the session tonight. Any key takeaways? Any aha moments? Is there a go and do that you might have identified or something you want to share back with your club? But what is your takeaway from tonight's session? Yes, reminders, right? There's there's multiple ways to do things. Absolutely, it's not a one one size fits all. Finding what works in your club. I love Dolph's <laughs> confidence though with having them do that. Return to healthy competition of members getting programs on assigned days. Oh, I like that. Uh, we're gonna ask a local local bourbon maker. I'm liking that. Yep, absolutely. No right answer. Do what works for your club, steal programs, and visit other clubs. And that's a great comment. Thank you for whoever shared that. It's great to go visit other clubs and see how they do things. Have a program on getting members more familiar with the Learning Center. Absolutely. For those who haven't checked it in a few years, the Learning Center is really rich and robust. There's some great programming there uh, on topics all sorts of professional development type things from managing change to DEI, um, just a variety of different things that you could be doing. Field trips once in a while, right? Get us out of our, our comfort zone. Uh, the Oshkosh Club just visited the sheriff's office. And I don't. I think everybody walked out of the jail cells as well <laughs> as walked in. So I think it was a good, uh, it was a win. That's I love like it. a plus. Awesome. Well, I think that's a wrap on it for us. And we are at oh, 701. So I am going to say another big thank you to our panelists for joining us tonight and sharing. Mark, John, and Dolph, thanks for sharing and everyone for your great questions. Um, and as Mary says, inspiring to see and share with all of you. I think that's the perfect way to close tonight. I absolutely agree. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for everything that you all do for Rotary. And have Thank a wonderful guys. evening. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you.